My name is Jack Marley and my wife's name is Anita, not Jacob Marley like Scrooge's late partner. Though my buddies at school tried to call me that, admittedly, they only did it once. Then I convinced them not to. In our social circles, my wife is happy to be called Anita Marley, but in business circles, she prefers Miss Anita Richardson, that's her maiden name. We work for Richardson Holdings, an international company where we are both senior managers. She is head of contracts and I am production manager. Anita feels that her status is not harmed by the reminder that she is the boss's daughter. Her father, Atlas, started the business and is still the CEO. He often jokes that with the last name Atlas, he was destined for great things. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me, sir. You only call me sir when other employees are around to hear you, Jack. But when it's just the two of us, you call me Atlas. After all, you've been my son-in-law for 10 years. If you're still uncomfortable saying Atlas, then call me daddy, anything but sir. Okay, dad. It's just that the image I have of myself doesn't allow me to say Atlas, you know, the man who has the weight of the world on his shoulders. Well, why not think of me as someone strong enough to carry that weight? Good idea, Atlas. So, what do you want to see me about? When Anita and I got married, you drew up a prenup. I don't dispute you needed to protect her shares in the company. That's exactly why I did, and it's clear that if we divorced, I would be left on the losing end, and it would be my fault. And that's absolutely right. Please tell me you have no intention of divorcing. I paused, not for effect, but just to make my thoughts clear. I'm afraid we may be heading in that direction. Anita's never told me that, and I'm damn sure she would have told me about it immediately. There's a reason she hasn't talked about it, she doesn't know it herself yet. What have you been doing, Jack? I've been doing nothing. She has. You're a good man, Jack, and you've turned out to be a fine manager and a fine son-in-law. So, I'm keeping myself to myself for the moment. I will simply state that I am quite sure that you must have made a mistake. I understand. For that matter, I'm surprised too. And I must admit that in a court of law, my evidence would be called circumstantial. However, they are very convincing. And what do you think she did? Certainly not an affair. Unfortunately, I think so. I believe she had sex with Lombardi while she was in Naples. What? With CEO Bonetti? Yes. I don't mean to say that Anita's sex with Lombardi was the reason the deal turned our way. That would be an immoral business practice. She may have had sex with him simply to experience another man outside of our marriage, or for some other reason. Either way, as unhappy as we are both, I believe she was unfaithful. Then you must tell me everything you know and everything you suspect. Do not omit a single detail, however insignificant. But in doing so, you will proceed on the assumption that I do not believe my daughter has done anything reprehensible. I understand. That's what I know. To finalize the details of our contract with Bonetti, the Italians have invited us to Naples for three days and two nights. You realize that contract isn't quite the right word, Jack. They call it a merger, but really, we're buying out Bonetti. It's called a friendly takeover. Lombardi himself will resign, the rest of the employees will keep their jobs, and they're all very well off after our deal too. Yes, I understand. Atlas's position. It's just easier for me to think of it as a contract since Anita is our contract manager. Of course, I was just being pedantic. The trip to Naples was part of her job. Go on. We sent Anita and Terence Green, your right-hand man. It was Mr. Green's show, and it could be argued that it was not necessary for Anita to attend, but I realized that her presence would have been helpful since she is fluent in Italian. You're right again. Of course, her language skills were honed during our honeymoon. And yes, I remember that you paid for a trip to Rome and Venice as a wedding gift. Go on. But Eddie's company put them up at the Grand Berto Hotel. Lorenzo Lombardi stayed at the same hotel for the duration of their visit, as did their own contract manager, Romano Mattia. So, the first thing I suspect is why did they do it? I can see why they wanted to impress us with a luxurious venue, but they had no reason to stay in the hotel at the end of the day. 
The company is in town, so they are local and had no need to stay overnight. Anita told me about their trip and didn't mention the sights or the evening entertainment. So why were they there? I must say, I don't consider that any proof. Atlas said they were our hosts, why wouldn't they stay to dine with us and have a drink in the evening, as a common business practice both here and throughout Europe? Besides, these two may not live in town. They probably travel weekly for work and stay in hotels anyway. Agreed. But you asked for an account of all my suspicions, however faint. And circumstantial evidence becomes more and more convincing as details accumulate. I accept that. Go on. Then there are the hotel facilities. I read their brochure, and only two rooms on the top floor, both overlooking the garden, have a whirlpool bath. You know, the kind with little holes from which water shoots out at you. I know what a hot tub is, we have a hot tub. Lombardi had one in his suite. I continued. The other three didn't, their rooms were a floor below. When Anita went back to England, I overheard her talking to a friend on the phone. She said she had tried it once, and the jets made her feel very sexy. She didn't realize I had heard that, and later told me that the same friend had just bought a whirlpool tub, but Anita said she'd never tried such a tub, and could we buy one? That's a rumor. Yes, but I'm already nervous telling you all this. I have no reason to lie to you, but your daughter lied to me. I'm still listening. It also bothers me that Terence Green retired to his room right after they finished dinner, both nights. He left Anita at the bar with two Italians. I know he doesn't drink alcohol, but he could have stayed and had non-alcoholic drinks. In fact, he should have done so. You said yourself that this has always been normal business practice. You spend some time with your client to grease the wheels of business, but if Anita had some private arrangement with Lombardi, it seems to me that Mr. Green may have been complicit or even encouraged it. On the face of it, it was at least rude to leave them alone. You are right, I would never behave this way on a business trip. It very much looks like he was deliberately turning a blind eye to it. I agree. It doesn't look nice, but perhaps he wasn't feeling well. Do you really think he could have felt ill both nights, at the same time of day? Did he mention illness when he came back and reported to you? Very well. It seems suspicious. I think if this were a police investigation, they would be looking for means, motive, and opportunity. I said your daughter is a very attractive woman, so means goes without saying. I can't think of a motive, except that Anita thought sex with Lombardi would complete the deal or perhaps improve it. And I have to say, I'm not really interested in that one way or the other. If she had sex with Lombardi, whatever the reasons, I want a divorce. And as for possibilities, she's a thousand miles away from me and everyone who knows her, and Terence Green, who quietly went out for an early evening and left them alone together, has given her a great opportunity, both nights. I must admit that you have described a scenario in which her infidelity seems possible, even probable. However, I would disagree based on your evidence. This is my only daughter we are talking about, and I would like to think she was raised better than this. If I have to choose, my loyalty will matter more than my suspicions, and I'm loyal to Anita. Don't forget, their contract manager was also present. I understand. I probably feel the same way if I had a daughter. Do you have anything else? Yes, there is another event that triggered this and seems to tie all my suspicions together. It concerns Bonetti's contract manager, who, as you noted, was also present. I handed him my phone. This picture was sent to me on Anita's first night in Naples. I'm convinced it's from Romano Mattia. So all it depicts is your wife touching glasses with Lombardi's. I assume they're toasting to the successful outcome of the negotiations the next day. You're right, that's exactly what they're doing. But I wonder why there are no glasses for Mattia and Green. I think Mattia was sending me a subtle warning, perhaps his wife has cheated on him in the past, and he's showing his disapproval. Disapproval of what? It's only wine, and it was done specifically for the camera. The right hand shaking hands, and the left hand raising a toast, that's the kind of picture you could put in a magazine or the local paper. Nadia is not in it because he's taking pictures, obviously. But look at your daughter's left hand. 
She's not wearing a wedding or engagement ring. Married women don't take off their rings to arrange a friendly takeover. They take them off to appear unmarried, and when they're looking for extramarital sex. Atlas stared at the photograph and frowned. I'd finally served an ace. Now he was struggling. But Lombardi could easily have found out she was married. Why hide that fact, right? The lack of rings sends him a signal. It says, look, I'm free. Does Lombardi know she's married? Well, Mattia is her co-worker. Do you know if he's married? Perceiving Anita as single would allow Lombardi to stay in her comfort zone. Okay, I'm almost convinced. So what do you want out of this? If, and I emphasize if, my daughter has been unfaithful, you've started a conversation about a prenup. The office hints that you may send Anita to Naples to arrange things so that Bonetti will be ours. If you do so, my suspicions will be aggravated. But whether it's true or not, I want the job. We can start the divorce proceedings here with the least inconvenience to you and the company, and I can move to Italy for good. Out of sight, out of mind. You won't have a daily reminder of your daughter's infidelity. You paint an attractive picture, but I can't go that far without hard evidence. You can disappear out of sight, but my daughter will still be here. She'll know why you got the job, and she'll wonder why I sided with you. I can't bypass the prenup and give you what you want until you prove she should be back from lunch any moment now. I'll produce the proof this afternoon, say at three. She'll never admit it, Jack. She's tougher than me. Why are we doing this in the briefing room? Anita asked. We have something important to discuss, I replied, and I don't want anyone eavesdropping. Have a seat. Can't this wait until we get home? No, it's an emergency. Then make it quick. I have to get back to work. Then straight to the point. Did you have sex with Lombardi while you were in Naples? You dragged me out from behind my desk to ask such a stupid question? No, I did not. Well, considering that I had less opportunity to wander than you did, do you think I was ever unfaithful? No. Have you never? Do you believe me? Yes, Jack. I came to Dr. York's clinic this morning with a problem. It turns out I have syphilis, and I must have contracted it from you. The silence dragged on for a full minute. Then, oh my god, Jack, I'm so sorry. Wasn't it with Lombardi, or Mattia, or both? She flinched at the word both, as she should have. Admitting who it was would be a little easier now than defending herself against sex with two men. Lombardi. You had sex both nights. Yes. I assume your cell phone was in your pocket, recording everything? Atlas asked, but you told her a lie, didn't you? Her first answer to me was a lie. I was allowed to. I'm not going to fire her, you know that. I didn't ask you to. Take the rest of the week off and get on with the divorce paperwork. I got up to leave, and he pressed the intercom button. Miss Wells, send my daughter in, please. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.